Uh, we never do Black Friday. We do our own thing that we call Plant Friday. And for every order, we plant trees instead of giving any discount. It's the e-commerce master plan podcast here to help you solve your marketing problems and grow your e-commerce business. Cutting through the hype to bring you inspiration and advice from the e-commerce sector and beyond. Here's your host, Chloe Thomas. Hello and welcome. It's great to have you here. Thank you for hitting play and choosing to listen to one of our inspiring guests. Before we get into the interview, I just want to say a big thank you to Ellen Moritz from Trade for the introduction to this awesome guest. Thank you, Ellen. Now, in this episode, we're talking to a big global fashion brand in the sustainability space. We're talking about some of their tips and tricks around becoming more sustainable and communicating that to their customers. We are talking about what their Black Friday approach is and sneak preview, they don't do it. So we'll be talking about that. And he's sharing some really interesting insights into how they manage their team and their marketing channels, plus some tips around gift card and affiliate marketing and visual merchandising. There's quite a lot in this one, really. Uh, It's all coming up. Please make sure you listen to the end of the episode so you don't miss out on my guest's top tips, which are frequently described as the best bit of the show and my own take on this episode. Connected Sourcing are your trusted procurement partner, specialising in helping small and medium-sized businesses purchase products and raw materials from suppliers in Asia. Head to ecmp.info forward slash sourcing to find out more. Connected Sourcing services include product design, product sourcing, freight forwarding and legal services. They work with companies like you to find innovative and sustainable solutions. Think of Connected Sourcing as your own product procurement team and be as much or as little involved as you want to be. With quick response times and flexibility, you can tap into certain parts of their supply chain or access a full end-to-end supply chain solution. Let your local account manager handle the details of your procurement so you can concentrate on the bigger picture. Contact Connected Sourcing today for a free consultation to see how Connected Sourcing can assist your business in growing its bottom line. Just use the short link ecmp.info forward slash sourcing. That's ecmp.info slash sourcing. Are website tech headaches getting in the way of your sales? You need a tech partner to help you hit your business goals. You need Zitec. Zitec have over 20 years experience, are experts in Magento, Symfony and WooCommerce and have already helped over 300 e-commerce brands to grow. For a limited time, Zitec are offering 15% off their tailored maintenance packages. Find out how Zitec can solve your tech pain points and set you up for success. Success. They would love to chat to you. Make that happen at ecmp.info forward slash Zitec. That's ecmp.info slash Z-I-T-E-C. Don't miss out on a partnership that's proven to drive results. Go to ecmp.info forward slash Zitec today. And now to introduce our special guest, Callie Querholm is the e-commerce manager at Swedish fashion brand Dedicated. Founded as an environmental retail chain way back in 2006, Dedicated is now selling from three physical stores in Sweden, various retailers around the world and globally via its Centra e-commerce store. In total, they did sales of just under 10 million euros in 2022, and about half of that came in via the e-commerce store. Hello. Hello, Callie. Hi. Awesome to have you here. Thank you so much for for being up for doing the interview. Before we start talking about Dedicated, how did you get into e-commerce? Thank you for having me. Well, I've done a lot of different things in in my life uh, work-wise. So I've had a long time working in the restaurant business, having my own restaurant. But having a kid, the times weren't the perfect to work evenings and weekends. So I thought I'd need to do something else, but I wanted to do something revolving around business. And I found an education uh, with e-commerce and applied and got in and I really loved it. And since then, I've just focused on e-commerce because I think uh, that's my now lifelong passion. 
it gets you, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> it, it really gets you, and then you you discover we're all we're all just here. We, it feels like everyone ended up in e-commerce in some form of accident or other, but then we we get completely stuck. Exactly. It doesn't matter which country you're from or almost which generation you are. It seems we always end up getting stuck. But that's not what we're here to talk about. So, let's find out a bit more about Dedicated. Where in the world is the business based, and where are you selling to? We are based in our Stockholm office in central Stockholm. We are selling basically to the whole world, except for a few countries where we can't deliver. Yeah, basically the whole world is uh, is our playground. Cool. And I mentioned in the intro that you sell to you sell wholesale to a number of other retailers who stock the dedicated brand. Does that feed into the e-commerce sales at all, or is that just something that's treated totally different by you guys? I mean, it's treated totally different. I think we have around 700 retailers that sell dedicated around the world. But also, it's a good supplement for us to get our brand out there and and get visibility. So I think it is a complement to our business, even for the e-commerce. Hard to track, but we'll happily take that brand awareness. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Cool. And then tell us a bit about the product, because all I said really was that you were a a fashion brand with some level of environmental interest. So tell us a bit more about what you're selling and the, the environmental side of it, please. We are selling women's and men's clothes, uh, full collections from underwear to winter jackets, swimwear, everything. And we are working with the people and planet in mind at uh, all times. So we know that fashion is not going away. So we want to be a, a fashion brand that does things a bit different and uh, want to be a part of a positive change in the business. We want the people creating our clothes to have a decent pay, fair working conditions. Uh, we also want to care about the environment. So we always look into how we ship things, our packaging and all sorts of things around that. But also all the materials, of course, in our clothing. So we work with organic cotton, we work with Tencel, recycled wool, recycled polyester. So we try to have a conscious mind about everything that evolves around people and the planet, basically. Taking that route, the sustainable route, the people and planet route, it's kind of like like a never-ending journey. You fix one area or you, you dive into one area and then you find another area and you find another area. As a business that's been around and trying to, you know, working in this, is this space since 2006, I'd assume you've done most of the big wins would that be fair to say, or is there a new area of becoming ever more sustainable that, that you're working on at the moment? I think you can always do better, uh, of course. But I mean, we, we have taken some steps, but we are always uh, looking to improve. And I think there's always things to do to improve. And there's so much new technique coming out all the time. So you have to be really out there to, to get the information to be really sustainable for real. Because it's so many people talking about sustainability now, but only a few that's really, really playing the game. So I'll ask the question, for you, what is really playing the game? To what what bits do we need in place? Do we need to have be tackling or have dealt with to reach a point where we can say we're getting closer to doing enough? Because I'm, I'm airing away from saying doing enough, because I think, as you said, there's always more to be done. But what are those key things we've got to be tackling? For starters, I mean, you have to do things and not just talk about things. But what I mean by that is there's so many brands, there's like a trend going around, it's been around for a few years now, that you always have a sustainability guide on your page, but it doesn't really say anything. And you don't have like a mindset to get there and be sustainable and make the right choices. But I think we we have had that mindset since the beginning. We are out there to do some some real good, what we think is good. Basically, you have to you have to walk the walk and talk the talk. I think you're you're totally right that you have to walk the walk, and I think it's really important that you you immediately also say you have to talk the talk because it's wrong to talk the talk without walking the walk, but it's kind of morally wrong to walk the walk without telling people you're walking the walk. If that does that make sense? I feel like I used the walk and far too many times then. <laughs> Yeah, of course, I know what you mean. And I think that that's one area that we have been improving this year and will improve even more that we haven't been talking enough about what we do and 
trying to get out there to our customers and, and our fan base to really explain what we are doing and, and what the impact is. So, so from this year, we had a plan to do it, do it more and we have, but we want to do it even more. So we will try to do it even more in the future. And with those communications, do you find that your audience are reacting really well to them? Is it, I mean, obviously you're not entirely doing it or not primarily doing it as a sales driver, but do you find they're thinking more highly of dedicated because they now know what, what levels you're going to? Are you, or even are you changing their mindset by telling them, you know, helping them realize what's actually possible? Now we hope we are driving some change, both in the business and for the customers. So, yeah, I think so. And also, you can see that more and more people are more aware about the environmental problems that we have in the world and the, all the pollution and, and everything. So I think people become more aware about uh, the problems and want to take more conscious choices. So we want to provide them that and uh, we want to talk about why they should take take that choice uh, of buying something more sustainable for a bit higher price. And we think we have, have the words to back it up. Excellent. Well, I wish you all the success in the world with that that change, because I think it's such an important one. And, and you know, it's, it's on all of us to help consumers make those better decisions. So love that you're doing that. Um, let's get back to the, the basics of the business for a minute or two, though. The team at Dedicated. What does it look like? How are you split across wholesale and retail and online? And, and are you choosing to outsource anything rather than doing it in-house? It depends. Uh, we are a team at the office. We are about 20 people there. So we have a production team, a design team. We have the e-commerce team. We have the economic side. And we have also uh, the sustainability part where we have one person dedicated to only working with that part. And we have a CFO, CEO. So we have like, you can, you can divide it in, I think, the three big teams, which the e-commerce team, I think is the biggest one. But then also, of course, from the e-commerce side, we outsource a lot of things. We are a team of seven, eight people in house, but uh, we outsource a lot of marketing, some uh, analysis, some automations on the site, uh, a tool that we work with, the warehouse, the email marketing. I mean, there's so many parts when you work with, with e-commerce that sometimes it's better and cheaper and more effective to bring in experts from the outside and you do the basic work in-house and you, you bring in, in some extra experts from the outside. So, um, Kali, given you're, you're, you're clearly constantly making these decisions about as part of the, you know, within the e-commerce team, what are we keeping? What are we outsourcing? What is it that you've decided that those seven, eight people in the e-commerce team need to be doing what are the what are the key things you want to keep in house for now we have we have a marketing manager that's like responsible for the for all channels and overseeing that we communicate uh, as a red thread throughout all our communication we have our director a graphic designer one person dealing with all the customer success we have the social media and also marketing and visual m- merchandiser in one row row one copy and SEO specialist, and also we have one um, person uh, responsible for coordinating all the photo shoots and, and film makings. I bet that person's busy. <laughs> yeah, she's really busy. But that's what we keep in house. And also we have like, and in, it's, he's not in house, but he's a front end developer that we use all the time. That that is external, but he's almost like in house because he works with us all the time. Got you. So it's kind of like the the core brand quality. So I don't quite want to say content, but the brand quality elements are the ones that you're you're keeping within the team. And then it's the not quite getting stuff done, but it's the more mechanical stuff that you're outsourcing. Would that be a basic way of explaining it? Yeah, I, can, I think that's a really good way of explaining it because we don't want to spend hours sitting in ad tools and, and building ads uh, when we want to create a, a great brand and do creative stuff, basically. Yeah, I always think it's one of the hardest things to outsource is brand content. Yeah, it's impossible, I would say. <laughs> yeah, it's something gets lost in the in translation if you're doing that. And you also mentioned uh, when we were talking about who's working in house that you have one sustainability person 
Uh, I'm guessing sustainability is a part of everybody's role, but then other people might might be going, "Wow, that's a, that's an awful lot of manpower to dedicate purely to sustainability." So is that person are they kind of like a QA person who's keeping a check on everything, or are they identifying the next big project and and working on that? What's your sustainability person doing? Yeah, she is only working with that basically, uh, and she's uh, doing the yearly report that we started releasing this year about our emissions and uh, what we can do better. Uh, she's researching uh, factories and she's uh, researching basically everything that we do. If we're going to buy a new box for e-commerce, uh, she's going to research that. So it fulfills all the um, requirements that we have. So yeah, basically she works really hard about to help us make the right choices. Got you. So I totally get why having one person on all of that would make so much sense because it's a whole new skill set all of its own getting to grips with all the different things you have to take into account and when you're looking at external suppliers it it becomes so much harder yeah brilliant great to understand all that about the team i had another question about kind of the the basic setup you've got there which is you're using centra for your e-commerce store which i very rarely come across anyone using that platform so i'd love to know uh, what you think of it and what the reasons are for for it being the one you guys have chosen it's a swedish platform but I mean, it's growing all the time and it's got great quality. It's actually, it's quite big. It's got a big backend. So uh, you can do a lot of things. You can handle product data. You can, it's like a pin system in there. We handle basically everything from there. It's, it's a pretty good system, but it can be also be too, too big if you are a smaller company. But the choice on, on Centra basically was long before I started on Dedicated. It was over 12 years ago. So... I think it just came up as an idea and um, they just liked it and went for it. It was just you no know, a, a coincidence, I think. And I guess it's one of those things, if it's not broke, why fix it? If it's delivering what you need it to and if it's got a built-in PIM, that's one less massive integration to worry about, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cool. Thank you for that. So I was having a look around uh, the website prior to this and you've got gift card really prominent on the website. It's right up there in the header along with men, women, sustainability. Why is gift card so prominent for you guys? I think there's really, that we believe that a gift card is a good present. It's also a good present to buy whenever. So it should always be the up there as a tip for the customer. And also um, we sell a lot during uh, like the festive seasons, especially around Christmas. And uh, a lot of people is buying uh, gift cards at uh, at that time. So we just believe that it's a, it's a good way of showing that we have gift cards. Nice. I like it. Simple, straightforward. And everyone's going to be hearing this in fairly late October. So I've got to ask the questions. You're such a sustainable brand. What's your approach to Black Friday? Do you do it? Do you not do it? Do you do it in a special way? What's your take on it? Uh, we never do Black Friday. We do our own thing that we call Plant Friday. And we have the whole week that we uh, have a cooperation with the organization called One Tree Planted. And for every order, we plant trees instead of giving any discount. So we don't do our own campaigns and trying to do some good. We don't do discounts that much. Sometimes uh, we, we offer some customers a little bit of discount, but we don't drive sales that way and we don't want to. Excellent. So it's, I, I love the fact that you're not just purely opting out, but you're taking an opportunity to put a different, a totally counter to Black Friday message out there at the same time. And is that something you've been doing for years and years? Yeah, I think this will be our fifth year doing it. So yeah, for a while. So it's fair to say tried, tested and working for you. Yeah. Excellent. And so with all that's going on with what you're doing at Dedicated, what's got you excited for the, you know, the upcoming season? The season now coming in is very important for us. It's the autumn winter season. Usually it's a good period for us, but the world is in shock at the moment with inflation and war and everything. So it's a bit shaky for everyone. So we we have to see what's happening, but we have we have just released our new collection and uh, it's looking great. I'm really happy about it. Uh, we started advertising it last week. We have some big collabs coming up. In three weeks, we are releasing the biggest collab of the season and uh, it's with an organization called Nonviolence that's working to reduce violence in society. 
So we have a, a, a big collab with them and also some um, pieces of clothing that we are really proud to show in three weeks. So it's going to be uh, exciting. E-commerce master plan is supported by some of the greatest companies in the e-commerce sector. Here's a reminder of who they are. Connected Sourcing are your trusted procurement partner, specialising in helping small and medium-sized businesses purchase products and raw materials from suppliers in Asia. Head to ecmp.info forward slash sourcing to find out more. Connected Sourcing services include product design, product sourcing, freight forwarding and legal services. They work with companies like you to find innovative and sustainable solutions. Think of Connected Sourcing as your own product procurement team and be as much or as little involved as you want to be. With quick response times and flexibility, you can tap into certain parts of their supply chain or access a full end-to-end supply chain solution. Let your local account manager handle the details of your procurement so you can concentrate on the bigger picture. Contact Connected Sourcing today for a free consultation to see how Connected Sourcing can assist your business in growing its bottom line. Just use the short link ecmp.info forward slash sourcing. That's ecmp.info slash sourcing. Are website tech headaches getting in the way of your sales? You need a tech partner to help you hit your business goals. You need Zitech. Zitech have over 20 years experience, are experts in Magento, Symfony and WooCommerce and have already helped over 300 e-commerce brands to grow. For a limited time, Zitech are offering 15% off their tailored maintenance packages. Find out how Zitech can solve your tech pain points and set you up for success. They would love to chat to you. Make that happen at ecmp.info forward slash Zitech. That's ecmp.info slash Z-I-T-E-C. Don't miss out on a partnership that's proven to drive results. Go to ecmp.info forward slash Zitech today. It's time for the Top Tips Round. Okay, I love this section because it gives me and our listeners some really quick ideas for taking our businesses to the next level. Callie, are you ready for the Top Tips? Yeah. Excellent. The book top tip. If everyone listening to this podcast agreed to take Friday off and read a book to make their business better, which book would you recommend? I would recommend a book that's maybe a little bit different. Uh, it's called Let My People Go Surfing by Yvonne Chouinard. He's the founder and owner uh, of Patagonia or former owner. He donated the ownership in Patagonia to a trust to ensure profits are used for addressing climate change. And he has... Um, a new way of leadership, I would say. Uh, this goes way back, but, but it's an, it's new leadership and a new way of looking at the world and how you can um, make your co-workers improve and, and perform at their best, basically, in a different way and a different take. An excellent recommendation. Thank you. Uh, the traffic top tip, which marketing method do you either prize above all others or think doesn't get the press it deserves? From this year, we have started to work a a bit more with uh, affiliate programs and affiliate partners. And I think that's a really good way of of working if you can get good deals on that, especially if you are a smaller business, because the risk is so low compared to to other channels. Uh, You pay afterwards, basically, most of it. So if you can get good affiliate partners, I think that's a, a good way to move forward. I feel like affiliates is now the secret source that a few people know how to use and everyone else is either using badly or hasn't even realized existed so have you got a tip or two on how to find those good affiliate partners because that's where a lot of people stumble we started out small like two years back with uh, a site called good on you that's rating uh, sustainable fashion brands basically so the collaboration was good from the beginning i think that's the key so that the site that you're working with they have customers coming in or people coming in to read and, and be interested of what you are selling already. Because uh, if you're just going to go with coupon codes and everything, you're just going to be lost with everyone else doing it. So you have to stand out in some way. And I think you do that uh, the best if you find the good partners that collide with your with your business. 
Lovely. Thank you. That was perfect. Uh, the tool top tip then, maybe a collaboration tool, a social media plugin, a phone app, or just a way of working. Is there a cool little tool you use that makes you and your team more efficient from day to day? Uh, yeah, actually, one thing that's re- really complicated in Centra that we were talking about before is the visual merchandising of products in the product feed. We started working with a company called Hello Retail, and they have helped us to... Uh, through AI, automate our processes with with the fronting up products. So we have some parameters, clicks, sales, and a few other things that the products that get the most clicks and sales, they they get fronted up uh, in the top. So that person that was doing that before could do something else instead. Excellent. Love that. How do we spell the name of that tool you are now using? Uh, It's called Hello Retail. It's a company. Yeah, just go into their website and then you have a look. Excellent. Thank you. And the carbon top tip. What's your favorite way to reduce the carbon footprint of an e-commerce store? The way we work, we, we try to do as much as we can, of course, but it's, uh, it's always difficult. But we have looked at all our packaging and made sure that it, it, it should be 100% recyclable, should be environmentally friendly and so on. And it should also be easy for the customers to recycle. Uh, so. Yeah, and we try to inform our customers that they should uh, recycle it. And yeah, because we send out so many boxes so uh, and bags, so we need to know that that's not harming nature in, in any way. That's that we don't want to. I, I really like that tip because it's such a it's such a straightforward, fairly straightforward place for any e-commerce business to start the journey, and such an important one. So thank you. Loving that. Callie, before we say goodbye, could you please remind the listeners where they can find you and your business on the web and social media, please? Uh, yeah, you can just go to dedicatedbrand.com, scroll around and have a look at our fantastic products. Or they can go to any social media. Uh, we're pretty big on Instagram. It's also dedicated brand everywhere. Pinterest, TikTok. Yeah, you find us uh, under dedicated brand everywhere. Brilliant. And I believe you've got a special offer for the listeners too. Yes, of course. Uh, your listeners can get a 20% off on their order on anything on the website. They just have to write master plan as the code. in. You can see it as a small field in the checkout. Marvellous. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. Callie, thank you so much for being on at the e-commerce master plan podcast and being so generous sharing your experience with us. It's been brilliant chatting with you. So um, thanks for sparing the time. Oh, thank you for having me. That's fun. Brilliant to find out more about the dedicated brand there. And I thought that, you know, learning how they're structuring their team and what stays in-house and what goes external is really, really fascinating because I think it gives them so much flexibility on their marketing and e-commerce efforts by taking that approach, keeping the brand in-house, putting the kind of the marketing channel work external, super clever and clearly paying off for them in a big way. One of the bits he was talking about towards the end then about the collaborations they do with other brands and other artists and other organizations, really fascinating part of the business. So well worth going and checking out the collaborations part of their website to see how they're doing that. And I suspect it's doing quite a lot to change the minds of consumers too. And then just brilliant advice around becoming more sustainable and communicating that with consumers. So really good to talk to Callie there. Um, You can get your hands on the notes from this episode, including the top tips and links to what we've mentioned by heading over to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash podcast or use our direct episode short links. You can put ecmp.info forward slash podcast whatever the number of the episode you're listening to is into the URL bar and you'll go straight to the correct page of the website. How cool is that? Uh, And when you get to the website, please do add yourself to our email list so you don't miss out on any of the other things I'm sharing to help you improve your business, like our new webinar series, E-Commerce Explored, where we're tackling some of the big topics in e-commerce at the moment. Now, if you liked this episode, then make sure you check out episode 455, where we're talking team structure and recruitment. Really interesting episode that was quite recently. And if you want more on fashion, then on the website, we've got a page listing all our fashion interviews. You'll find that via the short code ecmp.info forward slash fashion. 
Thank you so much for tuning into this and every episode that you do of the e-commerce master plan podcast. I bring you a new one of these interviews every week because I want to inspire and help business owners like you to succeed and thrive with your businesses, including progressing along the path to net zero. So if you know someone this show can help, please tell them to listen to the e-commerce master plan podcast. I hope you have a great week and don't forget to keep optimizing. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce master plan podcast. Find out more at ecommercemasterplan.com slash podcast. Don't miss out. It's time you joined Chloe's e-commerce club, our free club that's all about helping you grow your e-commerce store. Join right now for free at ecmp.info forward slash club.